That's it. I'm calling it. This is the best $20 IEM out there. I mean, we've been here before. The budget Chi-Fi IEM market has been insane for the past couple of years. It's a great time to be a budget buyer. The KZ Xclinical ZEX Pro came out $37. Great tuning, but with a few compromises. Yes, there was no detail. Yes, soundstage and imaging took a hit. And sure, the highs do get a little bit harsh at times. But hey, it's $37. I mean, what more do you want? Then the Moondrop Chew came along and changed the game once again. You had nice, clear, transparent mids, beautiful tuning. Again, there were some compromises, anemic bass response, highs did get a little sharp sometimes, and that metallic timbre you could not get rid of. But hey, it was $22. What more could you ask for? Then there was the Tin Hi-Fi T1S, competitor to the Moondrop Chew, but that was really not very good out of the box. With a little EQ, it made a valuable contender because it didn't have that metallic timbre. Yes, you don't have detail and soundstage and imaging, but again, it's $20. How much more could you ask for? This much. This much more. From here on out, this is what you can expect for $20. Let's get the basics out of the way. It comes in a box, comes with the earbuds, comes with a wire, few extra tips, and a manual that tells you to burn it in for about 100 hours, if you believe that sort of thing. It's all plastic body. I think it looks pretty fetching, and it is definitely very comfortable and lightweight. Great, we've got that stuff out of the way. How does it sound? Well, let's start with the mid-range. There's not much to say about the mid-range because it is gorgeous. It is clear, it's crisp, it's detailed, it is wonderful. Artists like Jacob Banks and Dragon Bone have just the right amount of graveliness in their voice. Nylon strings on an acoustic guitar have just the right amount of energy. They come across really, really well represented and female singers are beautiful and lush and smooth. It's just a really, really well-tuned mid-range. In fact, I'm beginning to sense a bit of a theme here. This is the 7 Hz Zero and this is the Moondrop True. This is the Salon of Dioko. You see what I'm saying? I, it's like the Chi-Fi market has said, great, we figured it out. This is mid-range tuning at its finest. We're going to move on to other things. And frankly, I don't have an issue. If I was nitpicking, I would say maybe the mids are a smidge recessed and maybe just a smidge on the sharper side. But this is just personal preference. Honestly, it's brilliant. The real magic though comes on either side of it. So let's talk about the bass, right? Straight off, I'm gonna tell you this is not a bass head IEM. I'm looking at all you skull candy crusher people out there. I know you're out there, we see you. Hey, you like what you like and we're not judging. Maybe a little bit. The 7 Hz Salnots Zero is, well, it's a more restrained bass experience. Mid bass tends not to slam quite as hard as most people would like, but I found that it was still quite a bit of thump there and it was nice and satisfying without being overbearing. See, I tried to EQ it a little. I boosted it up by about maybe 3 dB or so and I got some gains, but nothing great. And then beyond that, it just wouldn't do anything. I just don't think the drivers are capable of much more. And I think 7 Hz knew this and decided to go for a more modest bass boost instead, which I think is a very good choice because what they've done is a nice linear bass rise into sub bass. And this is when I was really surprised because these guys actually have sub bass extension, a $20 IEM with sub bass extension and get this, with detail, like genuine detail that you could hear. Let me paint a picture for you. You remember the Salnots Dioko that I reviewed last week? Of course you do. You've been subscribed to this channel. Of course you saw that. And if you haven't, there's a button right there. What, what are you waiting for? Go on, roll the dice. Don't think twice, just hit subscribe. This. I prefer to the Dioko. Check out the frequency response graphs. Exactly. They're ditto. And yet, somehow, maybe it's the driver, but I prefer how this sounds. In the sub bass, this digs deeper. In the mid bass, this doesn't sound as hollow as the Dioko. And dare I say it, it has a surprising amount of detail, even when compared with the Dioko, an IEM that is five times the price. That's incredible. But really, where it shines, is the highs. This is the in-ear fidelity neutral target, right? Just, it could be any target, but let's just choose this one for convenience sake. This is what the Moondrop Chew looks like. It follows the target and you can see where it exceeds it and gets a little bit sharp as well. Then you have the ZEX Pro. Then you have the Salnotes Zero. In my subjective opinion, this is just right. 
It's just the right amount of highs without being overbearing. It never gets sharp, never gets sibilant. Hell, even Ed Sheeran doesn't sound shrill on this IEM as he often does on Chi-Fi IEMs. I don't know what it is. This thing is brilliantly tuned in the highs and they tend to complement those mids just right. And not only that, just like that sub bass, there's so much detail that you can hear. For a $20 IEM to give me this much detail and balance is outstanding. Almost as outstanding as the sponsor for this video. The official Twitter handle for this channel is twitter.com slash what's new tech. So head on there and follow and I'll do some random tweets now and then, but every now and then, I have some giveaways planned in the future. Maybe not in the immediate future, but it's coming, so you might want to follow up. Whew, I don't know what that just I had this weird dream about Linus. Anyway, the highs. Brilliant, very transparent. Every time a jazz drummer hits those hi-hats, every time a cymbal crashes, you hear that point of contact, you hear the shimmer around it, you hear oh, so much detail. It is absolutely gorgeous. Which I think is also why it has a bit of space. When you put these on and you listen to a track like Jacob Banks' Monster, great track by the way, you should check it out. You'll see what I mean. It requires a sense of space and this little $20 IEM gives it that. Don't get me wrong, the staging is just left here to right here. It's nothing more than that, but there's a bit of three-dimensionality there. A lot more than I thought would be possible at this price point. And the piece de resistance, if you will, is the fact that it also has incredible imaging. The ability to pinpoint where each instrument and vocal is coming from is actually really good surprisingly so so at this point i thought to myself it's got good imaging a good sense of space and it's got great highs that are well controlled and transparent is this a good gaming headset you know what i'm doing it you ready for this i'm gonna do it right here i'm calling it the sal notes zero by seven hertz is the best gaming headset you can buy no no not for twenty dollars the best Period. You can look at footsteps with pinpoint accuracy. You can hear every little sound effect around you. And because of that sense of space, you can tell how far or near they are from you. And it never gets sharp. It never gets sibilant. Even that 12 year old you've been matched up with in your favorite battle royale does not sound shrill on these. They're really, really good for gaming, except if you're doing something cinematic and you want to be immersed because again that bass response is definitely a little bit of a weak point here and it's not going to immerse you that much and it's not all rainbows and butterflies right apart from the bass response i have to say if there's a lot going on in a track like there's a lot of horn instruments chiming in together vying for your attention then it does seem to break composure and it's beyond the capabilities of this IEM for sure. But everything shy of that does phenomenally well. So just to get things straight, you get an IEM that has incredible mid-range response, a really, really nicely done high frequency response, which is something you just don't see very often, and a bass response that's, well, that's just enough to be engaging, but not so much that it stresses the driver out too much. More than the Moondrop Chew, not as much as the ZDX Pro, balance. In fact, if there's one word I would use to describe this IEM, it's balance. Plus, it's god tier for gaming and it's $20? You know, I had this thought. This driver, I think, is capable of a reasonable amount, but because it's a single driver handling everything, maybe it can't handle bass. Because I noticed that in quieter passages, bass sounded a lot better. And when there's a lot going on with the mids and the highs and whatnot, well, then the bass response starts to lack a little bit. Which makes me think, what if they had a separate driver just for the bass and another driver to handle everything else? What would that be like? Hmm, there's only one way to find out and it's in the mail. So you might want to hit that subscribe button and join me for the next video here on What's New. Till next time, stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.